Hi folks, glad you're back. We're in this study on the parables of Jesus and how they apply to us today. And I want us to begin today with what is called the parable of the four soils. You know, Jesus went about his teaching in a remarkable way, unlike many of the people of his day. He didn't just lecture. He used parables in a very powerful way to get people to think and to stop and cause them to really listen to what he was saying. Now, when Jesus was going about his ministry, his miracles were very powerful, but it's his teaching that was so important to us. And so the disciples themselves, when they went to Jesus in Matthew, the 13th chapter, they went to him and said, why do you teach in parables? And Jesus began to explain to them that he was doing this in order to talk to them about the kingdom of God. And there are those who have just didn't want to listen to it and didn't want to pay any attention. And so he used these parables out of ordinary events out of life in order to get them to listen, to think, and to take action on it. Now, what we're going to be doing today is looking at the parable of the four soils in Matthew, the 13th chapter. And it's here as we begin at verse 3 that we find this event. So let me just read this. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other plants fell along the thorns where they grew up and were choked off by the plants. Still others fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And then Jesus said this, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I want us to really think through this parable because it's so timely for us today. Jesus was amazed that even the disciples, as he was talking to them, did not fully grasp what he was saying. So in Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 13, Jesus said to them, Don't you understand the parables? How then will you understand the other parables? And so the value of what we're seeing here is Jesus is using events out of everyday life. He, he's talking to us on a one-on-one -on -one basis when we are reading these parables. Now, please forgive me. I want you to understand. I come from North Carolina, and my background, we used to use all kinds of expressions to get a thought across. You know, if you saw somebody who had just was just filthy, dirty, you would say, well, that guy is a dirty as a hog in a mud wallow. Or sometimes, you know, you, you, you see somebody that you, you kind of wonder if they really have it all together in their mind, and and we would use an expression like, you know, that guy's butter has already slipped off his biscuit. Well, there are kind of things like this that get your attention, cause you to think. And that's what Jesus is doing here. So let's get into this. Let's think about these soils that Jesus is talking about. But he begins, first of all, by talking about the sower. A farmer goes out to sow. Now, who is this sower? Well, Jesus answers that for us in Matthew 13, verse 37, when he said, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. Jesus is talking about himself. He's sowing seeds here. He wants us to be the proper soil to understand what's going on. So when people ask me, well, do these parables really apply to us today? They sure do, because... This is the same thing today as it was 2,000 years ago in getting the message of the kingdom of God across. So let's talk about the seeds. 
The first seed is in verse 19 when it says, Anyone who hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. So the first soil is referred to as the pathway, or some translation call it the wayside. Here's Jesus talking about hard, packed soil where the seed cannot take root. Well, here again he says that anyone who hears the message about the kingdom of God and does not understand it. Well, it's not because they don't want to understand it. They, well, really that is the case. They don't want to understand it. The, the evil one comes and takes the seed away. Who are these people with the hard-packed heart? These are the people who have already made up their mind how they're going to live, what they want to do, and they don't want to really hear the Word of God. Now, how does this apply to us today? I really believe that any time you and I have the opportunity to learn from the Word of God, Satan, and that's who these birds represent, Satan comes and pulls away that seed from us. So, yes, this applies to us today. you got to ask yourself, do you really want to know the Word of God? Do you really want to get into the Word of God and see what Jesus is talking? Some people just have the attitude, don't tell me what the facts are. I've already made up my mind. Well, Jesus is telling us that there are people like that and they will not receive the Word of God. The birds, as I pointed out, those are representing the wicked one. We see that in verse 12 in Luke, the 8th chapter. He says, those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. Oh, my friends, I, I hope that we're not like that. I hope that when we have the opportunity to receive the word of God, we want to be the good soil not this hard-packed soil. The second soil is the stony place. This represents people who hear the Word of God and may even let it come into their lives, but they don't want it to take much root. They don't want to let it really get down into their lives and take, a, uh, take them away from what they prefer to do for themselves. Matthew 13, verse 21 says, But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. Oh, my friends, this is, this is the tragedy I see in our world today. There are a lot of people who like to talk about God, who talk about their church, who talk about their friends and people at the church, but they don't have any depth in their faith. And when something comes along that shakes their ideas or their understanding, they're gone. People just walk away. And some hear the word of God and they will receive it, but they don't let it take root. And so how does that apply to us today? I know a lot of people who love to say, I've let Jesus come into my heart, but they're never into the word of God. They're not in any Bible studies at the church. They're not involved in Bible study at home on their own. And so they're very shallow in their faith. The third soil is those seed that fall among the thorns. In Matthew 13, verse 22, the, Jesus said it this way, The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. Oh, there are a lot of people who love to hear the word, and, and they're really wanting to take it in. But the thorns choke them off. What are the thorns? The cares of the world, the riches of life, and the pleasures of life. I tragically have known people who claim Jesus as their Savior, but they also claim the pleasures of this world, and they want more of that than they want of Jesus. The cares of the world cause us to be unprepared. It causes us to be distracted. The deceitfulness of riches can just corrupt us and cause us to fall away. There are the pleasures of life. And though how many people get caught up in this. Are you this person who has gotten caught up 
into the things of this world. The thorns of life are choking you off. This applies to us today. Then there's the fourth soil. This soil represents, as Jesus says in Matthew 13, verse 23, the one who receives the word of the, the seed that fell on the good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it, embraces it, takes it in and lets it grow and, take, uh, and, and grow into a full crop and produces many, many seeds. These are the noble and good-hearted people, those that are dedicated to the cause of Christ. You know, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, we read of a group of people that I think we ought to be like. They are called the Bereans. The Apostle Paul comes in and starts telling them about Jesus and the gospel of God. But what did they do? It says they searched the scriptures every day to see if what Paul was telling them was correct. And they found out it was. You and I ought to be that kind of people. Not just Sunday morning going to church Christian people but people who are living our lives every day, letting the Spirit of God be a part of us, growing in the Word of God so that we know not just what we believe, but why we can believe it. So let's see how this applies to us now. You've got to ask yourself, what kind of soil are you? Are you the hard-packed person who says, I'm not going to let this into my life? Are you the kind of person that is a stony place, letting the gospel hear some of the things, but you're not going to let it take much root? Or maybe you're the kind of soil that has a lot of thorns and thistles in it, weeds that will corrupt your faith in Jesus Christ and cause you to fall away. What kind of soil are you? Are you the good soil? Are you wanting to let Jesus Christ be a part of your life, coming to know Him as Lord and Savior? I pray that you'll be the good soil. I pray that all of us, as we endeavor to follow Jesus Christ, will say, Lord, come into my life, grow a bumper harvest that other people might know Jesus Christ and that we will have the assurance we'll be together for all of eternity. I pray that that's what we will learn from this parable. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for the way Jesus taught us. Thank you for the way that he spoke to us in loving compassion. But thank you that he uses illustrations out of life itself that we can relate to. Lord, I pray that you will bless us as we endeavor to be the good soil. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you next time.